Let's talk about how to use ACF and PACF charts to identify which model we should use for a time series analysis. Is that AR, MA, or ARMA? Is that AR1, MA1, or other model? When you try to identify a model, you should use ACF and PACF charts at the same time. Notice that in each chart, we have two horizontal dash lines. In this example, the dash lines are in blue color. Different software may use different color for the horizontal dash line. Some may use red color, some may use green color. But no matter which color the software is using, the horizontal dash line represents the same function. They represent the significance threshold. Only the spikes that exceed the horizontal dash line are considered significant. In this example, in the ACF chart, we have a, a horizontal dash line here and then here. In PACF, we also have two horizontal dash lines. Only the spikes, the vertical lines that exceed the horizontal dash line are considered significant. For example, in the ACF chart, how many uh, spikes are significant? We have one here, another one, the second one also significant, the third one significant, fourth one significant. The fifth one is not significant because uh, the vertical line is below the uh, blue dash line. So it's not significant. Uh, the spikes can be significant in the negative position as well. Sometimes you will see the spikes exceed the uh, bottom horizontal dash line. In that case, we also consider that spike as a significant spike. If you notice that in the ACF chart, there are a few significant spikes at the beginning of a ACF chart, but the significant spikes quickly decrease to the zero line in the middle. At the same time, in the PACF chart, you only have one or two significant spikes at the beginning of the PACF chart. At that moment, you should consider using AR model. Let me repeat. If you notice that in the ACF chart, there are a few significant spikes at the beginning, but uh, the significant spikes quickly decrease to zero line in the middle. At the same time, in the PACF chart, you only have uh, one or two significant spike. At that moment, you should use AR model. After we identify we should use AR, what order should we use for the AR model? We look at how many significant spikes we have in the PACF chart. In this case, we only have one significant spike in the PACF chart, right? Then we should use AR1 model. If you have a two significant spike in the PACF chart, then you should use AR2 model. This is how you identify the AR model. One point I want to remind everyone is that some software starts ACF chart and PACF chart from leg zero. What does the correlation at leg zero mean? It shows the correlation of the current value with the current value itself. I believe the software is trying to be considerate, showing the data user what is the correlation of the current value with itself. But the correlation at leg zero doesn't give us a lot of meaningful information when we try to identify the analysis model for a time series. So when you use ACF and PACF, you need to identify if the first spike is a spike at leg zero. If it is, then you should consider from the second significant spike. In this case, the chart starts from leg one. 
so I don't need to think about the leg zero issue. How do I know it starts from a leg one? I look at the important markers and then count back. For example, uh, the ACF chart and the PACF chart use phi as important markers. Here we have a leg phi, and then this one should be leg four, this one should be leg three, this one should be leg two, and then I can make sure that the first one is actually leg one. It's not a leg zero, right? If you have a, a spike at the leg zero, then you should ignore that spike. Same thing to PACF, we have a phi here, and then we should have a leg four, leg three, leg two, and then leg one. I made sure that the first spike is on leg one, it's not on leg zero. If I do have a, a spike, a significant spike at leg zero, I will also ignore that spike. For example, if I have a, a significant spike on leg zero, I have another significant spike on leg one. Which model should I use? I should still use AR1 model, not AR2, because we should ignore the significant spike at leg zero. I want to remind everyone about this point. I found many classmates frequently make the mistake because they take uh, uh, the correlation at leg zero into consideration. That's not correct. We should start from uh, the significant spike from uh, leg one, not leg zero. Another possibility of uh, our AR model is that the significant spikes are showing in views in the ACF chart. For example, in this chart, in the ACF chart, we have some uh, positive significant spikes at the beginning of the ACF chart, and then they turn to negative significant spikes, and then they turn back to positive significant spikes again, and then negative significant spikes again. If you look at the ACF chart, basically the significant spikes are showing in waves, right? They are in a shape like this. If you find that the significant spikes are showing in waves in the ACF chart, at the same time, you only have one or two significant spikes in the PACF chart, then we should use an AR model. What is the order? We look at how many significant spikes we have in the PACF chart. How many do we have? two at leg one and leg two. So eventually we need to identify to use AR2 model to analyze this time series data. Some classmates may have a question. Does it matter if the spikes are significant positively or negatively in the PACF chart? It doesn't matter. As long as it's significant, we will count the number of the uh, significant spikes to identify the order. MA model is kind of an uh, opposite of the AR model. If you find that in the PACF chart, you have uh, a few significant spikes at the beginning of the PACF chart, no matter they are positive or negative, they quickly decrease to the zero line in the middle. At the same time, you only have a one or two significant spike in the ACF chart. At that moment, you should use a MA model. Which order should we use for that MA model? We count the number of significant spikes in the ACF chart. How many is significant in this case? Only one. In the ACF charts, we can only find one significant spike. We will be using MA1 to analyze this time series. Identifying the armor model is the trickiest. If you find that both ACF and the PACF charts have lots of significant spikes, 
they are either quickly decreasing to the zero line in the middle or showing in waves, then you should think about using ARMA model for the time series analysis. You can have a lot of choices, but uh, in practice, we usually choose ARMA 11 as a model to analyze a time series. Otherwise, your model will be too complex to be useful. This is how you use ACF and PACF to identify the time series analysis model.